Rev up your engine! Don't you hate it when some slob scrapes your car in the parking lot? Look at that beautiful car, annoying, someone scraped it. So I'm going to show you how to fix it so it's looking almost good as new. Now I'm being honest here because paint is thin. This is a paint measurer. If we turn it on, it measures how thick the paint is in microns. Now a micron is a thousandth of an inch. So paint is not that thick. Most cars, the actual paint itself is three to five microns thick. That's three to five thousandths of an inch. Not that thick. Now this cool device measures it. We'll stick it on. And what does it say? 4.21. So that's 4.21 thousandths of an inch. That is not very thick. Now you hope when they scraped your bumper here, they didn't scrape more than that off. They often do. But you have to start by removing whatever impurities came off of the other car and pray most of it was the other car and not yours. Now whenever I'm doing car work with buffing, painting, whatever, I use these gloves. They're great gloves and it's a shame. I've been using these for years. The company doesn't even give me free ones. So if you're watching Safe Grip, please send me a few cases free. <laughs> and here's another freebie. I've been using this scratch out for years. You put a little bit on a nice shop towel. I'll use these blue ones. You see them all over the place. They don't scratch, but they wipe really well. And again, I've been using these for years. I buy them by the case. But back to the business at hand. You get a little bit of this and just dab it on. You get a nice dab. Always put the top back on. Because I learned. I've kicked these bottles over many times. This bottle's like $12.99, so don't waste it. Put the top back on. Then you just start swirling to polish it off. You can see some of it starting to come off now. It's almost gone, so we'll add a little bit more. Now as you can see, we're lucky, but we're not lucky. When you look closely, most of it's gone, but right here, that bit has scratched all the way through, unfortunately, to the black bumper. Now you still want to get this as polished as you possibly can. You never know, you might be able to get some more off. So we'll rub the heck out of that some more. Well that's as good as it's going to get, that's the black, but all this has gotten rid of the wax and anything that's on here. So, now we're going to prepare it for a tiny bit of paint. I'm going to use this mass airflow sensor cleaner because it'll get any residue off, any goo, anything that's on there and prepare it for paint. You can use lots of stuff, but a mass airflow sensor cleaner, I got bottles of it in the back and it evaporates and leaves no residue. So we're going to spray that a little. Wipe it all off. And now comes the fun, painting it. Now if you're doing a section, you could spray paint it, mask it off, but it's very hard to paint just one portion of a bumper. And it's such a tiny scratch, I'm going to attempt to touch it up. And this is why I say almost perfect, because in order to make it perfect, you'd have to strip it all down, paint the entire bumper. Spray painting gives tiny little bits at a time and it has to be even across the whole car. If you spray paint over spray paint, one, it's not going to latch on as well, and two, some parts are going to be thicker than others and it won't look perfect anyway. So I'm going to show you a trick I've done for years. First you need the right paint. So go to your ID here and what do we have here? That means color trim. This is a 4P7. So, I got Lexus 4P7. This automotive touch-up company makes pretty good paint. I've been using it for years. And again, <laughs> they're not paying me to say this. I bought this stuff myself. These are little touch-up ones. These are MA100s. I got them on Amazon. They didn't cost much. You can see they're great for touching up because as you pull them out, they got a tiny little head for tiny little touch-ups. You don't want to use a big brush gonna make a mess. And here's my trick how to apply it. You get an old cap off a spray can, shake off the paint, shake it good, and spray some in there. You can see there's no paint in there that you can dab your little stick in and touch it up. Yes, it won't be 100% perfect, but you won't see the black. It's much better. Then you carefully put just tiny bits of paint on. Hardly any at all. Now the thinner the better. Black plastic underneath. 
So you want to put a few coats of really thin gold over it. This is gold paint. Let it dry for 10, 15 minutes. Put a little bit so it doesn't stick out and get lumpy. You'll see a lot of guys have those touch up paint in a can with a brush. You put it on and it looks like somebody a sloppy fingernail polish on. You see all the lines. You want to make it as thin as possible and do it in various layers so it looks best. And granted, unless you're some kind of paint maestro, it's never going to look exactly the same as the spray on. It just can't. But it's going to look a lot better. And like I say, you want to apply three, four, five really thin coats and it will look pretty good. Now, for the absolute fanatics, the next day after it dries, you can get a little scratch off and you can buff it down to make it as smooth as possible and even repeat the process again over the course of days. And after you buff it and then touch it and buff it, it's going to look pretty good. Still, you know, if you go up really close, you're going to notice it. But it looks a lot better than that big black crappy scratch that you had in the first place. As you can see from far away, you can't even see it. And when you zoom in, okay, you can see a little tiny bit over there. But this is only two coats. If you really want to be a fanatic, hey, do four or five, then polish it and do some more. You can work to your heart's content if you want. I am probably going to polish this thing down in another day. You can see I made it a little bit taller than the rest of the paint. I'm going to polish it down the next day and do it. And this is Houston, Texas. It's very humid here, especially this morning. So I'm going to let it dry a day or two. Then I'll polish it down, maybe put a little bit more on. But what a difference from the first picture. But take my advice and don't be too much of a fanatic because these tiny brushes do a decent job and so does the spray paint. But understand as the car ages, the paint fades some. There's no way this paint is going to perfectly match the car. As you can tell, this car's had the bumper repainted in the past, and if you look closely, you'll see it's slightly a different color. It's the original paint. Even a professional body shop could not match the paint perfectly. So don't think you're going to do it at home. But really, as you can see, the trim on these doors is faded. You can see it's faded away, has water spots on it. Doesn't look that good anymore. Previous owner spent all of his time in Phoenix, Arizona. The heat and the sun just baked it off. But with the scratch off and a special sealer, you can really fix it to make it look quite well. As you can see, it's coming off. And as you can see, the backside's even worse. So we'll put a little more on here. This is so worn, I'll probably have to do it eight or ten times. Now don't worry about getting it on the paint, because this is just polished. It'll polish the paint too, and then you just re-wax it when you're done. And as you can see here, even more crud came off the back. So get yourself another clean towel and do the front and the back yet again. And keep doing it until there's no more black coming off on your rag. Then you know you've wiped all the old crap off. And as you can see here, there's less dark coming off. Eventually, there'll be no dark. Now you can also do it to your wiper blades to make them last longer, but really, wiper blades aren't that expensive. Those stupid little rubber trim pieces cost hundreds and hundreds of dollars to buy new ones. So it's best to rejuvenate them rather than buy new ones. They're not easy to find either. Every model's different. And as you can see now, got them pretty clean. Only a tiny amount's coming off now. Now you might think you're done because it's squeaky clean. You can hear it squeak. But you're not done because you want it to last. So you need to treat it. This is lithium trim serum. As you see here it says rubber and plastic trim. That's what this was made for. If that guy in Arizona would have used this stuff, I wouldn't be doing it now. <laughs> but he didn't, so you can see it's real thick. And you just apply it all over. All the plastic and rubber. Don't be shy. Use a bunch of it. it doesn't hurt the paint. It makes it shine. You apply it and let it dry. Then, of course, you do the back, too. Don't be shy. Use a bunch of this stuff. Any rubber trim. Up here, too, on the window. Don't forget that. And like anything else, if you let it dry and reapply it, especially if you do it the next day, it's going to last even longer. Now, a normal rubber or plastic, you can put it on and wipe it off, but you can see this was seriously damaged by the Arizona sun. So I'm not going to stay on for 10 or 15 minutes, then I'm going to wipe it off. So while I'm waiting, this mirror is starting to look a little shabby. So I'll do that too. It is an aftermarket Chinese one when somebody ran into the car. I put this on instead of the original factory one. And it's fading a little. I do have to say the original factory one was better, but it cost five times as much. <laughs> and it works fine. Look at that shine now. Now you did see a bunch of little dots because I'm too lazy to clean that off. Swine down the road with spray paint and white stuff, and it got white spray paint on. 
I wiped it off the paint of the car, but I missed this. So one of these days I'll probably strip it down. And now that it's dry, or semi-dry, get a nice microfiber towel and wipe the rest off. And don't forget to do the back and the sides that we did too. We did the rubber here. And of course, finish your mirror here that we polished up. It's a good sealer. Get rid of UV ray damage. And like any kind of sealer, conditioner, wax, doesn't last forever. I found that this stuff in Houston, every three to four months I'll do it over again. That makes the most sense because, hey, the sun's really powerful. All those rays coming from outer space, you want to keep the plastic and rubber from going out when they're expensive pieces like that. Like I said, the wipers, heck, they're not that expensive. Just replace them when they're bad. But these pieces cost a lot of money. Looks a lot nicer when they're all shiny and not corroded. So the next time you're messing with plastic or rubber on your car, don't just clean it. Seal it when you're done. It will last a lot longer. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.